Hello, Internet, and welcome to the Automatons update. So, unlike the uh, previous Automatons video, this is the full update, not just a beta release. There is a bunch of stuff, as you can see on this uh, automobile I've created here. There's a bunch of cool stuff in this that's really kind of completely unrelated to AI and Automatons and all that junk. So, I'm going to be covering the other stuff today. The AI blocks... Uh, Pretty much everyone on the planet's going to be covering that. We've already seen it. I've already looked at them. Uh, I, I hope and imagine that there have been some, you know, fine tuning and improvements to the system. But I don't know, and frankly, I don't care that much because it's not something that excites me nearly as much as these. This is a two by two wheel. So if I hold a block to it, four blocks. It's the area of that wheel. How lovely. This is something that I have been wanting and have been very excited for since they leaked it in the sort of teaser image on the uh, beta update. This kind of makes smaller scale vehicles reasonable. This is a fairly small little rover and these wheels fit it perfectly. And this is about the scale of rover I tend to build. So yeah, it's just a little car. And it looks like a little car. It's not got doofusly large truck wheels on it. I can... Oh, I can nearly wreck it into a wall. Uh, that... Oh. Okay, I did wreck it into a wall. Well, that's not a great start. Uh, yeah, maybe I could have uh, gone a little bit less with that steering turn radius, but... Yeah, it's just kind of good. They work like wheels, as you'd expect. You know, nothing mysterious. I am noticing, and I don't know if it's these wheels specifically or all wheels have had a slight tweak. But, let's see if I can... I can sort of make it roll. With power on, this grid doesn't want to just kind of roll around or roll down a hill. Let's test that real quick. Uh, in traditional fashion for these videos, I'm kind of discovering as I go. So... I should also probably fix the fire coming out of the front end. Oh yeah, so most of this I've not really tested or explored before. I'm just kind of doing it live. Okay, so if I roll up this hill. Okay, no, we do roll down as normal. I guess I was just on more flat than I kind of felt like. It sort of felt like the wheels had a... Like a level of braking applied to them, so I wasn't just going to roll around. Feels like it used to be that, you know, you park on a slight gradient and the vehicle just starts going unless you put the handbrake on. Which, you know, adds its own fun and makes some sense. But at the same time, these are theoretically electric motors being powered by batteries. If the batteries are on, there should be resistance to motion. Like if the, you know, even if the motors aren't turning, they should want to stay still. Fix this and I'll show you another thing I'm very excited for that had kind of been teased. And that you can kind of see in the little teaser photo. I guess I should maybe get rid of some of these. These are full grid or full block width air vents. So it's basically a conveyor block with an air vent on one side. And that's going to let us build flush air vents, finally. So we don't have any more awkward, like, you know, half-wall duckety things just to have an air vent in our large grid ship. We can have these things. They'll be just part of the wall. We can pipe them up. I like that they are piped from multiple sides so you can get the position right and, you know, get them in for smaller grids. So you could have, like... A wall like this, imagine this is the wall of a ship. I want my vent here. And then I don't really want to have to build blocks along this outer row. So I can use one of these, have some of these, have my uh, conveyor tubes. I could have these run off like, to the back of the container to a tank. And now this is a nice airtight little wall. One small grid block wide. 
You can cover that over with a panel or another thing I'll show in a moment. And yeah, it's just a handy little feature. Something else that I noticed, well, let's go with the colorful thing first. And this is something I didn't see on like the teaser trailer, you know, no, like teaser image or anything. Look at this little guy. It's hard to do because he's very small. Uh, yeah. So this is another little plushie. It's a Sabroid. So the little spider alien dudes. Yeah, you just have another little plushie. Something you can kind of put around. It can be a decorative. You can have it as, you know, find it as loot in things or put it in loot if you're the type to build things that have loot. It makes the world feel more like a world. Makes it feel lived in a little bit to have just little toys. So another thing, and this I believe I did touch on a bit in the, uh, in the previous video, but this thing that used to be an ejector is now a small connector. So if I have that there, I could stick one on my little fake wall. And we can see if I can do this without smashing myself, but... Very gently. There we go. We can now connect to things with a nice one-by-one -one little grid thing. You could have this recessed into your rover, so I could have one here and then use that to connect yeah just a nice another nice thing to be able to build small stuff a lot of this i guess it makes sense because it's based on drones but a lot of this update is focused on building small things which is something i very much enjoy so the last sort of small grid uh and it's not only small grid but the last thing i'll show on small grid on my little demo rover you may notice these mud guards. So that's the little two by one slope one end. And then look at this. I don't have to go all the way up. This is a panel that is halfway up a block. So as you can see here, just smack in the middle. It's oddly very handy because there are certain circumstances where you're definitely going to want a thing at that level. These little mud guards are a perfect example because they're basically perfectly sized to the wheel. Everything just kind of works. You don't have to worry about that awkward massive space that, you know, looks like some sort of 4x4 four four off-roader when you're building some sort of, you know, like a family sedan. I guess on to large grid, and large grid is going to be, uh, for me at least, a little bit of a disappointment. And I should also mention, I've kind of been showing it as is, I'm not covering the DLC editions. The large grid blocks, the editions, we have the first thing that was kind of teased is this conveyor cap, which lives under the conveyors. So you kind of scroll through, there's a cap. The idea is you can just kind of slap that over, say, you know, a cargo container if you have... Uh, a small cargo container there that you want access to, but you don't want all the ports, you know, visible. This goes on, and it just kind of covers it. Now, I thought, and I think a lot of people did as well, that these things were openable. That this was like a little door cover that you would stick on the side of your block, and, you know, you could access and still get into the cargo without the traditional, you know, slat door thingy. And that seemed kind of cool, because it would be an interesting way to sort of lock a cargo container. I guess you don't technically need that, because you can't access it if it's not shared. But, I don't know, it seemed like it would have been a cool feature to have this thing openable. And it looks like it should open. There's like a little hinge down here... If I kind of rotate, that's very much a hinge. This looks like a handle. It seems like the type of thing that you'd have like a service access hatch and you could open it up and then get into the cargo. 
and it would be kind of a neat little, you know, little style thing. But that is not how it works. At least not how I can tell in my very limited clicking of added a bunch with the interact key. So that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, but still a nice little detail, nice little addition. So the next thing you can see here, these are Willis ducts, which I'm still not 100% sure on that being the name, where that comes from. Someone smart probably understands it, but they're basically little, little air vents. Oops, I turned my jet back on. Little air vent type things that you can just kind of crawl through. So they're like little service access passway, passageways. These are kind of neat, and they'll add a lot of style to a build. They're also the only sort of block that you can pass through like this that's completely enclosed that, you know, makes sense to traverse long distance. So all of our uh, other passageway blocks, they have a gap on the bottom. Or on multiple sides. Which means... You have to have a block under them, like here, so that it creates an airtight passage. They help a bit because you can use that side as the floor and have it like under stuff, but these Willis ducts will allow us to travel, albeit in a semi uh, cramped manner, travel between areas with only one block connecting. So and there's a whole set of them too, so you can see there's this, which you can flip either way you need this one which i think just oh this has a little great vent which will be nice for putting these under as a floor so like you have that there and you'd walk over top of it and you could be like oh there's a vent down there there's one with a light which is very handy it's a rather dim light but you can actually light these and these are all uh you know vanilla you don't have to buy a dlc there is a corner so you can make turns, there's a T-junction, and there's a full-on four-way junction. And this little ramp so you can go from, you know, the bottom of a block to the top of a block sort of deal. So there is a, they have thought through these a lot. There's even this little vent cover, which could be useful, whoops, could be useful in a lot of different situations probably, but... You can see it perfectly fits over, so you come up to it and you're like, oh, this vent is closed, I can't get through. You can even, I love this, you can put it on the opposite side and then it's like it's been cracked open, like someone's opened it up to do some servicing and, you know, it just, you can imagine it slides up and down. The downside with this block, and it's another, I think, missed opportunity, it doesn't actually slide up and down. It is just a static decorative, you know, chunk of metal. And I think it would have been real neat if you could have come up to a vent, right clicked it and, or not right click, but you know, interact buttoned it and had it slide up so you could crawl out of the vent. As it is now, you come up to one of these, you've got to break out your trusty grinder to exit the vent and then you've got to build a whole new vent cover every time you want to recover. So, you know, it's fun from a style point, and these are really mainly designed for use as a decorative thing. They're sort of built so that you can have, like, eerie tunnels and an abandoned ship, and you're crawling through them, and there are monsters. You know, that's the idea. Another thing with these, and there was some speculation that I didn't fully buy into because it seemed like it would have been a very bold choice. But there was some speculation that these vents were going to be uh, cargo carrying as well, which would have been awesome. You can almost see they these almost look like they could be a little cargo passage. But alas, they do not allow you to, well, they don't have any connection to connect to cargo so there's no way they could be a connector or conveyor they are just just for static just for kind of some style there's also not anything like it would be nice if there was a version of this that didn't have this vent 
Let's test something real quick, because I'm curious. So if I have a cargo container up there, crouch my way in, uh, looking up is not very comfortable, but oh, if I, I can just get a highlight through that grate. So I can actually access the cargo container from this. It's not the most uh, elegant. Can I... No, I cannot weld the block up there. And that would have made these semi-handy if you could have walked... Like, walk through one of these vents, come up to an access port that's open, so that you can do some repairs on, you know, say, thrusters or batteries or other blocks that wouldn't normally be accessible and that you want to cover with like a wall this could have been the wall and you could have still accessed it that would have been lovely but we don't have that one so i suppose i should mention some of the uh, other stuff for those who haven't seen my other video on the beta and who just might be interested. So, we have the AI blocks, which are kind of um, in a group. They are now separate from the remote control. I believe they were part of the remote control in the beta, but I can't remember for sure. We also have in the computer block grouping, the event controller. So, uh, let's do this small because it's easier to handle. They are both small and large grids, so event controller, of course, and then all the AI stuff, so you can make big old drones or little drones. And I assume these things work mostly the same. Again, I've not really explored around with them because as neat as they are, it's not really something that I'm interested enough to dive in real deep at the moment, and... I think it'll take a lot of diving to really understand them. But for one thing, they're very neat looking kind of detailed blocks. So you've got this, which is this computer switchy thing. This, I don't remember remote operated system. I don't remember that from before. That's kind of cute. They're very nice and detailed. Uh, oh, interesting. You cannot access the event controller and small grid. I think the large grid when you can access it through that screen. Oh no, it's got a terminal. Uh, well, we'll look at this from here. So yeah, this thing, which I actually don't think I did cover because I was so uh, enjoying playing with the little drone robots. This basically lets you do well, logic in a semi-simplified form uh, without a programmable block or programs or anything of that nature. So you've got this, which has various events. It's got a whole bunch of random junk. So you'll have, like, settings, depending on which one you choose. So that, that one's just, does it happen? This essentially is looking for, does this event happen? And then you get actions you can do sort of triggering it like a timer block or like a sensor would, but for other blocks doing things. So, say we have this door, this light. We want, when the door opens, the light to a light. So we go into our vent controller. We can select one of the door opened. Yes. It shows us on this list our sliding door. We can then add it to the group of selected. So in theory, you could have multiple doors, like so. So, we have these. We go to our setup actions, and we want this to toggle block on and toggle block off. So these two positions work like they do in a sensor, where the first one happens when the event occurs, the second one happens when the event stops occurring. So you can use that to have two, th basically have an on and an off, depending on the state of the other thing. 
So, if I go out, open my door, door is open, light is on. We are being warned that the door is open. Close that. If I open this other door, same thing. Light comes on because the door is opened. Now, if I open this door and open this door, because the doors are open, the light stays on. If I close this door, the light goes off, even though this door is open. It's because currently, this event controller is only looking at, did a door close? So because a door closed, it triggered the door closed event. To fix that, we have this down here, which is an AND gate, which essentially means both things have to occur, and I should probably reset it before I click that, otherwise it'll start broken. So this means both things have to occur. So if I open one door, light does not light, because the other door isn't open. If I open the other door, there we go. And then, okay, I'm not sure why it did that. Uh... Hmm. Okay, that part doesn't make sense, but... You get the gist. And you can do this with all sorts of various stuff. This will be a big game changer to the game in general. This will let a lot of things that currently required a bunch of timers or a bunch of programs. You can just do it. And it means players on Xbox or PS whatever they are now, uh, will soon be able to do this as well. So yeah, it's just a good thing all around. Anyway, that is uh, the Automatons update, at least my quick and dirty interpretation of it. So yeah, go check it out for yourselves. Go, I don't know, buy the game if you don't have it. Why are you watching this video? Maybe it's to encourage you to buy the game. But yeah, Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Feel free to check out any of the other stuff I've done. Until next week, bye-bye.